Hello gainers, I'm Ralphie. Welcome to my channel called Fitter Philosophy. Um, it's about stoic, practical, experience-based philosophical stuff. And at the moment, you join me as part of a series, which was originally going to be seven chapters long, but I'm now going to extend it to 12. And it's funeral stories. Stories that I've encountered over my years working as an undertaker in Glasgow. Uh, I have to stress that the majority of funeral situations involve civil, decent and dignified people doing the best they can under the circumstances. But every now and again you come across families where something bizarre, really bizarre happens or you see the very best of people and of course more often than that, not, you see the very worst of people. But I'm going to tell you a, a, a story now about Alice. Alice was 95 when she passed away. She'd been very independent all her life. Her husband had died in an industrial accident and received compensation but his injuries took him uh, a couple of years after his accident but he wasn't much of a spender he was a he was a, a homeboy and he really left his wife Alice just to look after things and get on with things and particularly look after him and she had one daughter who had three children and she was always a good granny to them. They, they would go around and visit Granny Alice and, and get the tea and get the homemade cake. And the house was warm and small house, but it was always warm and comfortable and homely. And they wanted to keep her company because when the grandpa died, when her husband died, they worried that she was going to be lonely on her own but she was coping fine she adapted very well and not only that but she'd had a little bit of her own income from from working at a bookmaker's and she enjoyed the interaction with the public and she was a, just a jolly lovely person so people warmed to her and she was appreciated in the job she did and not much of a spender She'd go local holidays, but nothing exotic. And with the compensation, she, she had a decent nest egg. And what she really liked to do was collect, collect ornaments. And in particular, she loved what's called cruets. Now, cruets are a British name for essentially salt and pepper pots, primarily made from ceramic. And you can get really plain ones, you can get real tacky ones, but you can also get very good quality ones. And it wasn't unusual to see Alice with her shopping bag wandering around the car boot sales and auction houses and antique shops looking for little salt and pepper pots. And she got one of her grandsons to fit her shelves in the spare room of her cottage, a um, little house, and she painted it all kind of cream interior, and she put window blinds down, and it became her her little private gallery for all her pepper pots and salt pots, and she ended up buying mustard mustard pots as well and then gravy boats any old quality stuff that you'd put in a dining room table she had quite a fancy soup tureen very old silver solid silver she saw it in an auctioneer's it was very tarnished 
and because there was a slight bash in it they weren't selling it so she bought it and she spent quite a bit of money on it by the way because it was something like 17th century anyway the family kind of left her alone and she just carried on over the years now and again another pepper pot another salt pot she got so many she had to sell some to make room for others and in the meantime she was becoming quite an expert on it it occupied her mind occupied her time it kept her busy she'd do her research she'd go to the local library then laterally she'd buy some books on the subject and she got to know when computers arrived she went online and she'd have email messages with auction houses finding out more about what she had at this point they kind of knew what she had but her family didn't have a clue because as far as they were concerned it was salt, salt and pepper pots when she finally passed away in her own bed at home with the family by her side she says you know I'm really proud of you looking after yourself but could you look after my collection for me please because it's a lot more special than you realize now the sons and the sons didn't really pick up in this but one of the grandchildren did and started doing detective work and it turns out that over the decades that Alice had been collecting Cruets had become very niche desirable items in the same way that cigarette and cigar lighters have become highly collectible and old watches have become highly collectible and old firearms have become highly collectible. The humble, modest Cruet set had become, in its own way, a collector's item they sold it gradually piece by piece over the five years apart from the items that the families wanted to keep as heirlooms and memories of their grandma and with the money they got from selling them all the grandchildren if they wanted could go to university or college and have all their fees paid for them and it got them off to a real good start in life. There was one son, he was a plumber, so he wasn't studying apart from his day release at college. So he was doing an apprenticeship. So they gave him a lump sum towards his first house. And it was his first house because he would buy a small house and being a plumber, having trade skills, he'd do it up and then sell it on and buy a bigger house. And that's the way he worked getting a bigger property until he basically just took early retirement somewhere else in the world. And that family are a textbook case about how you go about things properly when you have the blessings of good fortune of having only one member in the house, one member of the family, who does something different, who discovers something and has a particular interest and follows through with it and it becomes a hobby, it develops into a passion and it graduates into a phenomenal opportunity for the heirs and the family of, of the deceased when they go. And that's exactly how it worked for Alice. Thanks for watching.